Okay, what we're going to do is Dr. Iggy and I often spend time getting together curriculum wise with the <coughs> Honors English kids, and we usually do more second semester. But I understand you guys have been talking a little bit about civil rights in your English 3 class. And what specific thing have you been reading? A letter from Birmingham. Letter from Birmingham Jail. Tell me what that is or what you know about that, Braden. Uh, Martin Luther King was imprisoned in Birmingham Jail and well, he sat there and wrote a letter. About the indecency? Yeah. yeah. Let, me tell, let me make a quick point though, because I took a kid's yeah. points off or kid on a test. What does imprison mean? That you've been accused of something, convicted of something, and sentenced to jail for a period of time. What does arrested mean? In jail okay, time. so was he in prison? No. no, he was under arrest. So there's our first last name. He was under arrest. So don't get that mixed up because in prison means you've been convicted and sentenced to prison for a period of time. So in prison and sent to jail through different things. But very good. He, that's kind of funny because I just dinged a kid for that on a test. But anyway, yeah, he was sent to jail one of many times and he wrote a letter there basically explaining. And did he think that this was going to mount to anything? I mean, he just did it right off his head. And we'll talk more about how, how quick he was off his head. But the point of the topic, the 10 reasons why you should care about Martin Luther King Jr. There are a lot of people, not only in Wyoming, but other states, that are a little bit offended that we even celebrate Martin Luther King Day. Okay? Because people are still racist. They still are prejudiced. When, I'll just kind of start this and tell you, when Martin Luther King Day, and this fellow right here, Representative John Conyers of Michigan, was the man that initiated legislation to have Martin Luther King's birthday become a national holiday. And he did that uh, shortly after his death in 1968, and the last state to succumb to that was in the mid-1980s. So it took some time to do that, some were right away. One of the last states that recognized Martin Luther King Day as a holiday was Arizona. Do you know why all of a sudden they decided to do that? Did I ever tell you that? Got some pressure, okay? I have been in this business for 34 years. I have been to many school board meetings. I have never once been to a school board meeting where anybody cared what type of biology books we were purchasing for the next year. But I've been to many, many board meetings where the topic of discussion was... History. No. President No. What do people go to the board meeting and complain about? Baseball. No. Sports. Oh. We're gonna fire the coach. We're gonna we're gonna buy new uniforms. I mean, I'm not kidding. You. I've been in this business 34 years. I've never been to a board meeting where anybody asks what kind of biology books they're buying, but they sure want to figure out why my kid didn't get all conference, or you know, we're gonna fire the coach, or why I'm gonna get not get new uniforms. Well, it took a sporting event to change Arizona's mind to decide to have Martin Luther King Day as a national holiday. What sporting event was that? Lacrosse. What sporting event would bring in millions of dollars in the year of community? What? The Super Bowl. And what happened is the Super Bowl was scheduled to be in Tempe, Arizona in the 80s. And the black players and some white players, as you'll find out in the Civil Rights Movement, it wasn't just black people, said they would boycott the Super Bowl if that date wasn't made a national holiday. And guess what they did? change their mind. I mean, it took money and Super Bowl pressure to do that. So it wasn't an easy thing. But anyway, the point being is that Martin Luther King in general, depending on the area of the country, it's a big deal or it's not a big deal. I remember when I was superintendent in Roberts, Montana, which is a very small school by Red Lodge, Montana, but a little bit bigger than Tensley, but not real big. We had one kid, Isaiah Davis, really nice little guy. It was he and his sister Monique went there. They were African American kids, only ones in the school, only ones in the county, only ones in the area. And we did not take Martin Luther Day, Martin Luther King Day, off of school, which is not uncommon. It's more and more common in states that are more adept with racial relations than it might be other states. You see what I mean by that? Well, he brought his, he took his kids out of school that day because he wanted to take them to Billings, Montana, where they were doing some things, and make them part of that and understand that heritage. And so, some of those things type of things that happen. So, well, when we talk about the reason I say 10 reasons why you should care about Martin Luther King Jr., because there's a lot of people that really don't. But here are 10 reasons really why you should. And the first one occurred in 1954, and it was a Supreme Court decision entitled Brown versus the Board of Education 
of Topeka, Kansas. You ever heard, anybody ever heard of that? Okay, 1954, Brown versus the Board of Education of Topeka, Kansas. Okay, anybody know what that decision ruled? No segregation in schools, right. And who made that decision? The United States Supreme Court declared that segregation of public schools was unconstitutional. Now this decision really began the long fight that we know as the Civil Rights Movement. Okay, that decision began the Civil Rights Movement. Because what had happened for the first time in the history of black Americans, they had gotten a ruling in their favor. Okay, because prior to that, they had schools that uh, white kids went to and schools that black kids went to. Did you know that in Warland, Wyoming, when my wife was in elementary school, she went to school here, but all the Hispanic kids went to one school? You know where that school was? Anybody, did anybody know that? No? Even, even before West Side, what? It was over there where the highway department, uh, highway department building is now, kind of by Slumberjay and across from that gas station, that kind of brick building tall big brick building by the movie theater kind of when we get there that used to be the school for Mexicans I'm not kidding you back when my wife was an elementary school teacher there is a guy in town very nice guy that's a former principal here he's very elderly now that would not allow Hispanic kids in a school well no can you believe you could do that today in Moreland Wyoming we did that so what Brown versus the Board of Education did didn't talk just about Negroes it talked about no segregation in public schools. You could not say that a certain ethnicity had to go to this school and a certain ethnicity had to go to this school. Okay? That's one reason why you should care about Martin Luther King Jr. Now, did he have a lot to do with that? No. But it made the civil rights movement click. Okay, the second reason you should care about Martin Luther King Jr. is a lady right here by the name of Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks. Does anybody know what she did? Who knows? Go ahead, Ms. Warren. She wouldn't really think on why she sat in a seat and then a white person sat there and then she said That's right. And that's that's right. In those days, could a black person sit on a public bus? They could sit on a public bus as long as a white person didn't come in and want their seat. And if a white person wanted their seat, they had to give up and give that seat to them. Well, on December 1st, 1955, Rosa Parks, who was a 42-year-old black seamstress, refused to give up her bus seat to a white man in Montgomery, Alabama. December 1st, 1955, Rosa Parks, a 42-year-old seamstress, obviously she was black, refused to give up her seat on a Montgomery, Alabama bus to a man, white man that wanted it. So what happened as a result of her not doing that? Anybody wanted to guess on that? She didn't get imprisoned. She got, she got arrested. And she got charged and went through the court, found guilty, and was fined $14, which she thinks not a lot of money now, but 1955 is probably 10 times that. Or more. So if you're a black seamstress, that was a big fine. So she, under local laws of segregation, which means it was legal to segregate on the bus in Montgomery. That was a law. It wasn't just something they, you know, bullied people into. That was a law. So Miss Parks was arrested. She was charged, and she was fined fourteen dollars. Now, who was serving as the pastor of a local church in Montgomery at that time? Martin Luther King Jr. And what he did as a protest to the way Miss Parks was treated, he led black citizens of Montgomery on a bus boycott. Now, what would a bus boycott mean? They would refuse to use the bus. Now, these are city transportation buses that cost money to get on, and obviously how they run their bus system by fares for people to get on. <coughs> so, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who was a pastor in Montgomery, Alabama, decided he would head up a bus boycott of black citizens, okay? Now, it wasn't just black people. I think you need to understand there were white people, not a lot, but there were white people who supported the blacks in their efforts. And so, blacks weren't the only ones that boycotted the buses, but most were blacks. Now, who were the majority of the people that rode buses? Blacks. Blacks. So, all of a sudden, this boycott 
Nobody's paying to ride the bus. And this thing goes on for 13 months. 13 months. Well, on December 13th, 1956, about a year and two weeks after the initial Rosa Parks protest, so to speak, on December 13th, 1956, the United States Supreme Court ruled that Alabama's state and local policies in general were unlawful on segregation. So no longer could they do what? Segregate buses or anything else. Okay? The first ruling in Kansas was just about schools, right? This particular Supreme Court decision in Alabama on December 13, 1956 stated that all Alabama's state and local policies on segregation were illegal or unlawful. You could not segregate anything. Okay? So what does Dr. Martin Luther King do seven days later on November 20th that he's quite proud of? Because where were blacks supposed to set if they could set on a bus? I didn't say that. In the back. So what did Dr. Martin Luther King do seven days after that Supreme Court ruling on uh, December 20th? What did he do that just tickled him? He sat in the front of the bus and wrote, un unabated, so to speak. So seven days later on December 20th, Dr. King takes a ride on a bus in Montgomery City in the front of the bus, which had previously been reserved for whites and Now, I told you that Brown versus the Board of Education of Topeka, Kansas kind of began the long fight that became the Civil Rights Movement. What did the events of Rosa Parks do? It put who into the spotlight? Martin Luther King Jr. And from this point on, of the Rosa Parks deal, thank you, Major. From this point on, Martin Luther King becomes the face of the Civil Rights Movement. Okay? And this one event of Rosa Parks and what he did to support her makes him the face in the national spotlight on the issue of civil rights. Okay, that's the second reason why you should care about Martin Luther King Jr. Mrs. Taylor, I'm recording this so you can get it off of my website if you want what you missed. Okay? Okay, the third reason why you should care about Martin Luther King Jr. were things called Jim Crow laws. Jim Crow laws. I'm going to give you three examples of Jim Crow laws. As a matter of fact, I've already given you one. What's the one example of Jim Crow laws I already gave you? People having to sit in the back of the bus, and when a seat becomes available for a white person, you have to give it up. That's an example of what they call Jim Crow laws, okay, where blacks were discriminated against. So one example of black Crow laws was that black people were forced to sit at the back of the bus or stand when a seat became available for a white person to make a seat available. Does that make sense? Okay. What might be another example of that? I've got two examples in this room. If you kind of look around. And they're pretty unique for me to have them. Actually, I had to search far to get them. The first one's right here. Atlanta, Georgia, September 1932. Colored entrance only. This is an original sign from a business in Atlanta, Georgia, 1932. This is not a replica. So this would be hung over a door that states if you're black, you can't come in that door. You've got to come in that door. Okay? So blacks had to come in the back, in the back doors. And this is an original sign. So an example of a Jim Crow law would be public establishments such as hotels and restaurants that are separating blacks and whites. But did they even do that? Did black, did, did, did hotels and restaurants do that? No, some of them didn't even get in. Some did, I shouldn't say all. A lot of hotels and restaurants didn't even let them in. They banned Negroes. But some establishments, if they did let them in, like bus stations, it would not be uncommon to see this hanging at a bus station where the black people came in a different door, okay? Even worse than that, you might see a sign like this. And this is over the top of a drinking fountain. And this is an original from Montgomery, Alabama in 1932. What does this one say? Drinking, drinking fountain. Whites had a different drinking fountain than blacks. Can I be serious? Can you believe that? So there's another example of Jim Crow laws where establishments would make them use different restrooms 
And this, can you imagine going to a drinking fountain at our school and have this on it? Uh, whites, Hispanics, because that's kind of what we have as far as our minority, so to speak, are Hispanic people. Can you imagine that being over the top of a drinking fountain here? But that's where it was all over. Here's another example I'll give you of Jim Crow laws, an example of an example. Yeah, who in here, and I know we got, and I shouldn't be judgmental, generally, I'm not sure if girls are into football, but as much as boys, but maybe might be. Who, anybody heard of Vince Lombardi? If you've heard of Vince Lombardi, raise your hand. Okay, who's Vince Lombardi of them? Doesn't mean, just because you heard him doesn't mean you know who he is, I'm just asking. Anybody know who Vince Lombardi is? Who's Vince Lombardi, Brady? Packers coach. He was a legendary coach of the Green Bay Packers in the 1950s, 60s. Matter of fact, that Super Bowl trophy they're so proud of, it's named the Vince Lombardi World Championship Trophy. Well, Vince Lombardi coached the Green Bay Packers in the 1950s and 60s. His biggest challenge when he went on a road trip wasn't the team he was playing necessarily, it's where he was going to house his players and where he was going to play. Because you could not put blacks in certain hotels, and a lot of restaurants would not serve blacks. So Vince Lombardi spent a lot of time going around figuring out where his team could stay and eat. So he walked into a restaurant one time, and he said to the owner, this is a true story, he said, do you serve blacks here? You know what the owner's response was? Sure we do. How would you like them cooked? That was the response he received. So. These are all examples of Jim Crow laws, okay? Black people forcing to sit at the back of the bus or have to stand on a bus if a white person wants their seat. Public establishments such as hotels and restaurants banning Negroes. Negroes forced by law to use separate restrooms and drinking fountains than the white people. How many people, I'll get a little tougher, how many people ever heard of Ernie Davis? Ernie Davis. Okay, Ernie Davis was a tremendous African-American football player in the 1960s, he played for Syracuse University. Okay, how many other people ever heard of Jim Brown? <coughs> he probably back. He was, little, he was a black running back from Syracuse, also. So was Leroy Kelly. But Ernie Davis was kind of the first really, really good black running back. Okay, so they they play in the national championship Cotton Bowl against the University of Texas, who is horribly racist, and they beat Texas. And Ernie Davis is named the most valuable player of the game, and generally they had a, a <coughs> banquet for the winning team and honored the most valuable player. Ernie Banks, or Ernie Banks, Ernie Davis couldn't go to his own most valuable player banquet because why? The country club they had him in did not allow blacks. So the whole team group just didn't go. But can I mean can you imagine such a thing? Those are Jim Crow laws. Okay, the fourth reason why you should care about Martin Luther King Jr. is the SCLC. See this picture right here? Big sign here, it says SCLC. And that's Ralph Abernathy, who is a close aide to Martin Luther King Jr., but it's SCLC. Anybody know what that stands for? Southern Go ahead. Southern Christian that's exactly right. That impresses me. You may you may get in the class, Mary. Somebody else knew that, too. A Southern Christian Leadership Conference. Who established that in 1957? Come on. Martin Luther King Jr. and some of his close friends. They formed the SCLC, Southern Christian Leadership Conference. And what did they do throughout the 1960s? Planned many peaceful demonstrations to try to end segregation and discrimination across the United States. All of their Demonstrations and protests were peaceful, non-violent. The SCLC was a big organization of civil rights workers who spent their entire decade planning peaceful demonstrations to end segregation and discrimination. Okay, our next reason why what was the most famous demonstration the SCLC led? March on Washington. Very good. Okay, I have a great speech. Okay, the fifth reason why you should care about Martin Luther King Jr. happened in 1961, involved a group called the Freedom Riders. Freedom Riders. And this was during President John F. Kennedy's presidency. 1961, the Freedom Riders. Now, I told you about segregation. In bus stations in Montgomery, Alabama, that was very common to have a colored entrance only. 
That's where that one actually came from, right? That one, although it came from Atlanta, Georgia, the same type of thing, you know what I'm saying? Drinking fountains, restrooms. Well, the SCLC decided that they were going to ride Greyhound buses from Birmingham, Alabama to Montgomery, Alabama to protest segregation in bus stations. Okay? So in 1961, the Civil Rights Movement, or the SCLC, now remember, those were volunteers that were both black and white, decided to ride Greyhound buses from Birmingham, Alabama to Montgomery, Alabama to protest segregation that was going on in the bus stations. They didn't like the signs that said colored entrance only, and the drinking fountains that said whites and colored, and the bathrooms that were separated. They weren't even separated male and female, if you can imagine. The black people were expected to go to the same restroom. Okay? Now, before they even left, in Birmingham, they were met by mobs. They were called the Freedom Riders. They were beaten and harassed before ever leaving Birmingham. So they're playing this trip from Birmingham to Montgomery. Before they even can get on the bus, they're beaten and harassed. Now, despite the fact that they encounter that tremendous amount of violence, they still promise to carry on their peaceful protest to Montgomery. But what was the problem after that violence occurred in Birmingham? What, what couldn't they find? Their goal is to get on a Greyhound bus and go to Montgomery. What couldn't they find? The bus. They found the bus. <laughs> No, oh, that's a good question. They found the bus. What couldn't they find? The driver. Who? Nobody wanted to drive the bus. Would you want to do that after seeing that? They weren't discriminatory in who they beat the hell out of it. If they assumed that you were part of this, they'd beat you up. Did they assume the bus driver might be part of it if he's driving the bus? Well, who has to get involved and, and make sure that Greyhound provides?